Hello and welcome back here to the Vega Baja Real Estate Talk with Ulrich at the Television Vega Baja. As you know, we are always trying to have very updated topics here at the Expert Talk. And today is one of the days where we really have some updated topics because we are talking about some issues that have been in the last month, probably the last half year, been very, very um, actual um, and very interesting being followed by all the legal experts because we're talking about three important topics that affects many, many buyers, sellers and owners of property here in the Vega Baja area. We're talking about the plus valia tax, we're talking about the mortgage floor clauses and we're talking about bank guarantees. So stay with us, we are right back. As always and every week, I'm joined by experts here on the plateau in the studios. And today I have the pleasure to be with Luis Miguel Fumaquero and Senya Yusova. And both are CEOs and co-founders of Fumaquero Abogados and International Investment Consultants. Hello, welcome. Hello, thank you very much. Hi. Um, I want to start with the first topic, um, Luis Miguel, um, which is plus valia tax. Um, we all know um, how important that topic is when selling a property in Spain. Um, just give us a little introduction of plus valia taxes again. Well, <clears throat> we have to remember that uh, plus valia is one municipal tax that charge the uh, increasing of the value of the plot uh, where one property is. Okay. So uh, this is plus valia. Mm -hmm. So it's a tax of the increase of the value of the of the ground, not the property as such. That's right. Only the the the, the plot. Okay, because that that's been a bit a little bit of confusion for many owners or sellers when when you because it, it's paid when you sell, not when you buy or you own, just when you sell. This has to be paid by the vendor. Okay, and it's paid to whom? Is paid to the town hall. Okay, so it is a tax basically that depends on each individual municipal area. Yes, um, uh, according with the with the um, um, circumstances and according with the parameters of uh, every town hall, uh, the plus valia can be higher or lower. Okay, so when we when we when where can we find out how much the plus valia tax is? So basically, you you go to the town hall. And you ask, um, you, they can calculate the, the plus value tax for you. Yes, well, <clears throat> uh, just to be done, uh, go into the town hall and they will make one liquidation and mm -hmm. they, they will say you exactly how much is going to be this tax. Mm -hmm. And what are the factors that influence this tax? So, what yeah. are the two? Or the well, three basically, factors? there are two. One is the uh, cadastral value. And other one is the time that you have been owner of this property. Okay, so depending on how many years you own the property, and and then the valor catastral in Spanish, That's right. um, which you can read out of your out of mm. your suma receipt. We have to think that we are talking about the cadastral value of the plot, okay. not, not of the total yeah. Uh, property. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, in, we, we know, like here in the Vega Baja area, there is 27 municipal areas. Uh, so basically, each individual municipal area has its own uh, catastral value. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's right. So when you when you sell a property, um, the catastral value depending on on where the property is in the municipal area. Okay. Now, um, in the case of um, a non-resident selling a property, which many of the of the property owners here for, from from abroad are, um, what happens to this to this tax? Uh, you have to think that the town hall try to avoid that somebody uh, sell the property and go away and not paying the taxes. Mm. So for that, what to do is uh, make one obligation to the. Uh, to the, to the person who's going to uh, sell, to sorry, to buy, uh, to retain this mm -hmm. amount and pay it in the name of the vendor. Okay, to, to the town hall. Yeah. And um, now, very often, um, well, normally this tax, because it's a property tax, it stands on the property. If it is not being paid, it stands on the property and it's actually on the, the future yeah. owner to, to, to cover it. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it's a bit, a little bit 
contradictory. When you sell a property and you make a profit, then you you pay the tax, also the, all the other taxes. Mm -hmm. But what happens now when you do not make a profit? And I think that's exactly where yeah. this new ruling goes. Yeah. Uh, well, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> as uh, we know, with the crisis, um, a lot of people, in fact, has been uh, usual that you sell the property for one uh, lower price than the price of the purchase. So, um, <clears throat> what happened with that? Because uh, plus value in Spanish is uh, increasing of the value. So, um, the position of the tax institute has been uh, you have to pay anyway because only for the fact that you have been owner, you have a profit, independent uh, about if uh, you sell for one or other price. Um, this has been a well, juridical problem in Spain, and in, in very, very near in February, we have one uh, sentence from uh, the highest court in Spain, Tribunal Constitucional, who says that this is illegal. So uh, <clears throat> you can, you are not obliged to pay uh, this tax if you uh, has not obtained any profits. Okay, okay. So basically, you can't be charged for something. So if you lost money on the sale, you can't be charged for a profit you supposedly have made. That's right. Okay, also we are not talking about... you. you basically, you, you, you did not make a profit over the property sale, but you did make a profit over the value of the increase of the value of the ground, which is a little bit contradictory. Yes. So that's always been questionable there, and, mm -hmm. and now it comes to the point where the High Court or the, the Constitutional Court, the Spanish Highest Court, said, well, that's not legal. That's right. And so th there is, I guess there is many, many property owners being affected by that. And um, <clears throat> Yes, uh, in fact, uh, <clears throat> we are having uh, a lot of uh, people who are uh, claiming uh, for the money that has been in the past, mm -hmm. uh, that has been people has been charged mm -hmm. for uh, one charge, and they didn't have uh, increase mm -hmm. in, the, in, mm -hmm. the, in the in the value of the property mm -hmm. in the moment of the of the selling. Mm -hmm. So, w what would you do um, if 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 I sold a property probably last week, last month, or probably last year? So, how long can I go back with with you on this new ruling? You can you can claim mm -hmm. uh, the. Timeline is four years. So if I we are in 2017, if I bought my property in 2013, I still can yes come back and claim this money back if I lost, if I didn't make, if I did not make a profit. <clears throat> of course, um, we have to we have to have clear that um, the plusvalía tax has been not a new. We are talking about only some. Uh, specific cases. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's not generally speaking, but far right. um, So, what, what's what's the procedure basically? What's the first thing to do for the for the <clears> person <throat> that thinks, well, I did not make a profit when I sold my property two years ago. So, what what should I do? Okay. My advisement is that uh, only when you are going to litigate against the administration, for example, in this case, you are going to litigate against the town hall, um, <clears throat> always first pay and later claim. Uh, because uh, for several uh, several reasons, uh, the first is that they don't have to prove that they are right. They mm -hmm. directly can to execute again your your goods, your goods, mm -hmm. and um, uh, all, um, if you don't pay, is uh, are running interest uh, penalties and all that. Mm -hmm. So, um, in my opinion, what I use to advise is first pay, later claim. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So um, you would, you could do it yourself, but uh, that would be probably very difficult because you are going against the authority. So that you, you would you would use some kind of like yourself, so, and, and I guess you are with <clears throat> some yeah. cases. Um, you in my you have to think that uh, when you have paid, you have to uh, send one letter to the town hall. Uh, including the asking, of course, the refunding of uh, this amount, and including which are the uh, arguments for to this money give back. Mm. Those arguments are going what you are going to use all the proceeding when mm -hmm. uh, all the administrative way mm -hmm. and in the judicial way. Mm -hmm. So um, it's very important that uh, you be uh, helped mm. by one professional. Okay. 
And um, obviously, in some cases, we know, depending on the municipal area of the town hall we are talking about, but in some cases, the plus value tax is rather low because the, the, the values are rather low, or somebody just had his property for a couple of years or three. Um, but in some other cases, so we can be really be um, into several thousands of euros. So it, it mm -hmm. might well be worth um, checking that out and claiming and, and uh, contacting a legal expert like yourselves. And you within within very short period of time, you can make an analysis and see whether it's worth going against the mm -hmm. uh, and trying to claim it back. Okay, right. very good. Um, so if you have if you if you feel you are in that case, um, it's definitely worth talking to the likes of. Um, of uh, Thumaquero Abogados here in Torrevieja, and they will find out for you pretty quickly. Um, okay, this is this was plus value as a tax when you sell the property. Now we have another topic, which is bank guarantees. Um, let's let's talk about this with Senya. Um, Senya, um, we know the Vega Baja has been a very attractive area for many many years. Many foreigners have been coming to the area because of we all know climate, lifestyle, and so on. So, um, and loads of properties have been sold, both resale and new. Now, um, many people have been buying properties with um, off plan from a builder, and um, with the crisis hitting hitting the whole area in 27, um, many people have probably not got their property, which was yeah. meant to be. So, um, what, 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 what's the procedure when you buy off plan? Right, and um, as you, as we, as we all know, uh, here this area is quite interesting area for invest. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who come to buy their properties to uh, to pass their holidays, to have a fun, mm -hmm. because of the climate, yeah. because of the good food, nice characters, wine, and all that. So, independently on the situation uh, in the world, independently on the crisis, people still can have here. And we always have demand of the properties. Mm. And what happened is that uh, in the last few years, we were presenting a situation of the crisis mm -hmm. where a lot of people uh, were buying houses here and um, were given all the possibilities to get mortgages, uh, to buy a house off plans. So when you buy a plot, you design your property and you, you make it for yourself. Mm -hmm. so, um, so banks uh, used to give um, a lot of possibilities for that people to buy. What happened is that, um, unfortunately, um, because of the crisis, uh, many builders, promoter companies got bankrupt and people never got their houses. Some people, obviously, <laughs> not, um, not many, but some people, we know, that got their houses never finished. Mm. and couldn't get their money back. Mm -hmm. um, what happened is that uh, here in Spain, there is a law that no money should protect those people who buy houses off plants. Mm -hmm. And the law is quite clear. Um, it is from the, um, 1978, and it um, says that if you buy the house on the off plants and you have to pay money and buy stages, if you have to pay money to the builder or to the promoter company upfront, any amount you pay have to have to be guaranteed by the promoter company um, with a special ways. Mm -hmm. There are few ways to guarantee those payments. Mm -hmm. It is the law says that it must be either the bank guarantee or it can be also the insurance policy that would cover any risk with regards to that project. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. uh, the problem is that sometimes um, people or builders, companies, uh, didn't um, guarantee those money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that very often happens. I mean, I remember back in those years, I mean, uh, most of the properties sold were, were new built, so where they were selling off plan and, and, and well, as we used to say, they were selling like hot cakes. So people just just bought and bought and bought, right. and and it came to a situation where she said, well, if you want a bank bank guarantee, you have to pay for it. Um, also, this charge should actually yeah. be covered by the builder himself, shouldn't it? Yeah. So people used to prefer uh, 
not to pay too ma too much money. So mm. Mm, they thought, okay, we would it will be sorted somehow. Mm. So um, this is why there was one um, interesting, quite interesting uh, case, mm. and uh, it went to the Supreme Court. And we got the decision, the sentence, uh, in December 2015, mm -hmm. and it got um, to do with the with a similar case where the lady uh, got a contract with the um, um, promoter company to build a house uh, for for the family, and where they paid upfront uh, nearly 40,000 euros, 38,000 euros, and there was a timetable to finish the. The, the house mm -hmm. and it obviously hadn't been done so um, they went to the first instance uh, second instance and in the third instance so in the Supreme Court they won the case and um, uh, the Supreme Court basically what says in this uh, sentence is that if you buy the house pay the money up front or during the construction and the builder or the promoter company doesn't finish the job on time, doesn't go ahead, first doesn't go ahead with this, so doesn't start, doesn't finish it on time, or if they just break the contract um, for some other reason and they get bankrupt in all those uh, cases, uh, the bank would take the responsibility okay. with the builder. So it's not only the company who would have to pay you money back because mm. this was the main problem that when the company got bankrupt people couldn't get through to them they couldn't get anything back from them mm. and they had no money uh, no n n no money in the account any longer mm. so now because of this decision what people can do is claim this money from the bank okay. and it says that the bank has the responsibility and the bank would have to pay this money back. We are talking about all the amounts, mm -hmm. so not some money. We are talking all the, about all the amounts plus. So the man, the total price increased by the legal rate uh, interest. Okay. According with the day where we we okay. are now, so yeah. it is very important to um, get all the information mm -hmm. uh, about the contracts, the payments. And yes, it can be claimed mm -hmm. because the bank is the one who normally, and the law says the same that the bank, when they, when the builder opens the uh, bank account uh, in their um, bank office, and there is a job uh, to be done uh, on the construction of the new building, the bank has ensure that builder present all the paperwork mm -hmm. and the bank has to guarantee mm -hmm. those payments okay. so the bank has to uh, require mm -hmm. the builder to present either the insurance policy or mm, guaranteed in the different way block the money mm -hmm. in the account mm -hmm. but it must be checked by the bank mm -hmm. and this is why the court said that if the bank doesn't do it is their responsibility okay. to give the money back yeah. to the people because it is as, as the as the proper word says a bank guarantee so the bank Correct. guarantees the yes. money and so far it's only been okay i'm exactly. afraid the, the building company has has gone bust they they got bankrupt they couldn't finish the house i'm sorry you mr buyer you are without the house and you are without your money and many people without knowing that you say oh well bad luck and probably they try to to claim it back Probably with others together, um, who also bought were in the same situation, but after a while they just run out of steam, um, tried everything That's and not. Correct. And now with this new ruling, you said two years ago, but hardly yes. anybody knows about it. So um, not sure. Yes, I think people should know that because yeah. most of those people who lost their money um, normally um, forgotten about it mm. because we're talking. We we have uh, the people who um, uh, signed the contract even 15 years ago, still mm -hmm. can go ahead with that. Mm -hmm. So we're talking a, a quite a long time. Okay. And so even so, you, yeah, well, uh, many people bought in the last few years, but, but uh, we are talking really, you can go back 10, 15 years, you said? 15 years. 15 years. Uh, from, the, from that decision, from that yeah. uh, sentence. From, okay. from the time of the sentence. Okay, so, so that was 2015, so back to 2010. 
So whenever you bought a property in 2010 or afterwards, and that has not been finished, you bought it off plan, it has not been finished, you paid money against the property, and the, the building company went, went bankrupt, you have the right to claim that money back yes. through the bank that guaranteed the yes. money. Uh, you need to be aware, it's very important to have in mind that uh, um, in 2015, uh, the preceding law changed, and now this uh, time scale is different. Where we, had, we used to have 15 years, now it's five. So okay. now is different. Mm -hmm. uh, if, and, and you have to be aware that the situation changes in the market and we, we, we see building going on again. With, mm. We see a lot of building companies mm. in the area who start to grow up again mm -hmm. and we have to be aware. So we mm. recommend usually to check all those details. Mm -hmm. Well, you definitely want to make sure that the, your money, the money you pay now, is guaranteed by the bank and, and, and or an Obviously. insurance company. You want to make sure you don't do the same mistake again that many people in the past did. But but the ruling is clear, so you have the right to claim it back. And um, same question to you, Xenia. What what would be the if somebody says, well, then I can claim my money back, which I lost ten years ago. What's the first thing to do? Right. What we would ask is uh, we would ask people to bring the contracts. Obviously, the contract signed with the company, mm -hmm. uh, and um, to justify payment done. Mm -hmm. That's all, basically, mm -hmm. uh, and to check time scale. And you can really look at yes, each we, individual we would, case whether they can apply. For we that. would check all that and and recommend something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Thank you very much, definitely, Thank definitely you. well well worth um, checking if you if you say, well, that's so long ago, well, it's definitely worth checking up again, and, and the likes of Sumake Rabogados will definitely be very happy to help you on this. Um, bank guarantees, uh, that was one, one of the three topics, very important. Um, and then there is uh, very, very recently, probably the latest, um, it has to do with banks as well. It has to do with mortgages in particular. Um, Luis Miguel, coming back to you, um, there, there is this word spinning around. Everybody thinks they know a little bit about it, but, but not really everybody really knows what it is. It's, it's called floor clause. Um, and, and it's many people bought property in the past with a mortgage, with a Spanish mortgage. Um, that means... Uh, that there is, give us a little idea of the mortgage system here in Spain, how it works, what types of mortgages is there? We can speak about thousands of uh, kind of mortgages, but uh, in general, uh, we can speak about two. One is the uh, fixed rate mortgage. Mm -hmm. This is, um, well, uh, you agree with the bank uh, one time of uh, mortgage, and uh, you agree with the bank uh, one payment. Mm -hmm. So, if you agree, for example, to pay every month one uh, amount, for example, let me say uh, 1,000, and 20 years. So, mm -hmm. you are going to be paying for uh, 20 years 1,000 euros, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, this is not very usual. The most usual is variable rate mortgage. Mm -hmm. For that, for to know which is uh, going to be the payment, <coughs> we uh, need two parameters. One is the... Uh, for example, the uh, URIBO, which is the uh, Indice de Referencia, Reference mm -hmm. Index. Okay. Uh, this uh, URIBO changed according with the circumstances of the markets. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the other uh, parameter is the uh, is one uh, addition to uh, to this uh, URIBO and um, this differential is called. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, we came to say that. Euribor plus differential is what you are going to pay every month. Mm -hmm. okay. This is the right. second time. Yeah, I mean, in the, the fixed interest rate is being used in other, well, in many other countries. I know from Germany, for example, many interest rates are fixed, mortgages are fixed interest rates. But here in Spain, it's very, very likely to have variable interest rates, in particular in the last years, like in the booming years, mm -hmm. um, um, mm -hmm. interest rates have been always variable. And, and as you say, it's it's always been the Euribor that has been on a European base, the index, how the Spanish, how, how the European banks borrow money to each other. That's going up and down. So yes. your monthly rate changes. And now what happened in the last, what, 10 years, that the Euribor has, has been going down quite a lot. But 
in the mortgages, what 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 is the problem with the with most of the mortgages with regards to their the boundaries with, yeah. with the bank sets? Uh, well, this is the problem of the uh, floor clause, mm -hmm. clausula suelo. Um, <clears throat> what happens is uh, the banks has uh, included in the digital deed of uh, mortgage one uh, clause where it says that uh, it's not allowed that you get profit when the your river go down. Okay, mm -hmm. so let me say, for example, let's imagine that uh, you have one rate of two uh, percent, uh, but there is one floor clause where it says that the minimum that you can pay for this uh, mortgage is four percent. So you cannot get profit. They get profit of the good situation that uh, now has the U river. Mm -hmm. This moment is negative. So um, the highest court, even the uh, Tribunal uh, European Constitutional of Justice, say that uh, <clears throat> those uh, clauses could be illegal, mm -hmm. okay? Because uh, um, the consumer mm -hmm. uh, has not received information enough, mm -hmm. okay, for uh, to know what's, what's going to be the uh, consequences mm -hmm. of this uh, of this clause. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, in those last years since the crisis basically started, I mean, the crisis has also, obviously, as we all know, hit the banks, and then the, so the, 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 the Euribor came right down, and as you said, it's, it's, it's negative right now, so it's below zero. But if you had a clause in your, in your um, mortgage title deeds which says, you you your it doesn't matter what the Euribor does, you are can't go below that. So actually what the bank does, they are benefiting because they borrow the money much cheaper as you are paying it to. So you are not allowed to benefit but they are. Yeah. And this has been the ruling of the of the bank saying, well that's that's obviously the consumer, it's against the consumer right and and, uh, and so what can be done? So if you know, okay I go I take my mortgage uh, title leads, look at it and I have a clause in there um, floor clause of 3%. So what can yeah. I do? Uh, first of all is uh, to check the digital lead, okay? To check the digital lead because in this uh, document we are going to see if exists one uh, floor clause, but uh, it's important as well to see the historical of the payments of the mortgage because maybe we can have one uh, floor clause in the digital lead, but maybe mm, the bank is not up in that, mm -hmm. okay? Um, when we have uh, realized that uh, uh, we have one floor closed and uh, it's been applied, we have to uh, check that uh, this uh, clause is new. And uh, when we know that, we will have to go to the bank mm -hmm. and uh, well, send one official letter. This is like, uh, like we do it and try to get one, let me say, friendly solution. Mm -hmm. uh, we always try to avoid a judicial way. In case that uh, we don't uh, get uh, the solution, we go to court. But I have to say in this point that, uh, well, for one very important uh, sentence uh, that say that uh, has to be refound all the all the money from uh, from clo from close flo from the flo floor close so mm -hmm. we, uh, that this wasn't clear. Uh, the Spanish government uh, agreed with the bank one official way, one official extrajudicial way. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, in my opinion, <clears throat> this is not uh, working because the most important of that was that uh, you made in the official way the claiming to the bank and in three months they have to give you an answer that we thought that was going to be the refunding of this amount. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, this is not working and at the end, uh, the most of the uh, clausula suelo for clause mm -hmm. we will have to be resolved in the mm -hmm. in court. Mm -hmm. So, um, obviously we can talk about a lot of money because if, if you have your mortgage for, I mean, since, since when is the, the URI war below zero already a good few years back? So, mm -hmm. uh, and if you have your clause, in, a, a floor clause at 3%, for example, interest rate, so um, it can be a lot of money that you've been paying month by month for the last five, ten years, and you can have the right to claim that back. As, as, as you said, it's... Most of the mortgages are legal, most of the mortgages are okay, but if you, if you feel that you are in a situation where you, where you um, could check it, you 
could definitely approach you and, and check it out. Um, um, and and as and as so it, it goes back fifteen years. Is that right or ten years? Oh. Yeah. Well, you, the, the timeline is fifteen. Uh, fifteen years. Okay. okay. But we have to think that fifteen years ago, uh, well, uh, there is not any case, or mm. I have never seen any case of one close so so mm. ancient. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, three very important topics, as you see, uh, very complex. Each individual has to be checked by a lawyer. Um, not every lawyer is actually concentrating on these type of things, but uh, because it's, some things are still unclear and it depends on, on certain uh, variables and so on, but definitely at Fumaquero Abogados, they are very expert in this. And uh, whether it's plus valia, whether it's bank guarantees, or whether it's floor clauses of your mortgage, you should definitely check it out. Thank you very much for, for my experts today. Thank you very much to be here. It was a pleasure and it was very informative. I hope um, um, many people from back home who consider, well, to be to be in one of those, uh, uh, I don't want to call it victim, but some um, uh, affected by any of those, so that they can approach you and get their information and, um, and get their, their case done. Um, Stay with me. Um, we are right back. Um, we're going into the lifestyle part, and it's something very, very interesting. Um, we are talking with the ACP, the Association de Corazón de Perros, which is the association of uh, dogs in San Miguel de Salinas. lifestyle part now, and um, today I'm joined by the President and the Vice President of ACP, the Asociación de Corazón de Perros, which is basically an association, non-profit organization for dogs, which means lost dogs, um, but we will see what, everything what the association does. Hello and welcome to the Morning. studio. Hello. Um, Mr. Markus Porz, the president of the association, and Mrs. Annette Hellner, the vice president and treasurer of the association, are here. And who else is here today? It's Cora. Cora is with us today as well. Oh, Cora, Cora is, yeah, she's a little bit shy. Um, Not she's a little bit, she's very, shy. very shy. She's there. Um, tell us a little bit what do you think happened? So, how did you get on to her? She was living on her own near the salt lake of Torrevieja in San Luis for about half a year, eight months. And then by the time she came near to the people, to the other dogs, mm. they were was feted by mm -hmm. the people. And then she found out that my dog was very kind to her. Mm. And day by day she came nearer. And mm -hmm. since four weeks she was living with me. So she made friends with your dog yeah. and, and, and that's how she stayed with you. And um, Mr. Post, what what... What are the the ideas behind the association? We are helping abandoned dogs and do everything we can do for the owners of the dog so that they don't abandon the dog. Okay, so it's not only that you, you find lost dogs, but you also offer basically the service for yes. people. Mm -hmm. We know we are in a second residency area here. Very often people go back to, yes. to see their family yes. back, back in Northern Europe. And you offer the service for them. Yes, that's it. You take dogs for holidays or when somebody is ill and needs. Okay. No. So just. Time owner. Yeah, but just that probably not happening what happened to Children, Cora. Yes. Yeah. Which she, she most probably is a dog that somebody had and she couldn't use it anymore or could, it would ha probably yeah. doesn't have the time anymore, didn't have the time anymore, and there, there she is. And, yeah. uh, and Mm, how many dogs do you have roughly at the moment? At the moment, from abandoned dogs, we have only this. Okay. This one. We don't take too much because mm -hmm. we are only two persons. So yeah. We, mm -hmm. And we also have own dogs. Mm -hmm. I have three, and she has one, and also has two two mm -hmm. two others once a week. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you look after the dog yes. while people you walk dogs and and. Yes. Yes. I okay. walk with them. Fix them when the owner is busy. Okay, okay. And um, what, what exactly are you doing then with the dogs? I mean, she, she is obviously, Cora is a dog that needs a lot of attention, mm -hmm. I yeah. guess. So, and, and um, when they are there, can you train them slowly but surely to get... I started to train her with a dog teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with a trainer, per, with a personal trainer for her because she's too shy for mm -hmm. the group. Mm -hmm. But 
she learns very good. Mm -hmm. She's very good on the lead already. Mm -hmm. The first audience she knows to stop mm -hmm. when I say, tell her she goes mm -hmm. near me when I tell her. Okay. And I hope she will go on learning yeah. a lot so that it's okay. more easy to find him. Yeah. somebody to adapt to. Mm. Yeah, and um, I mean, we see in the background while we talk, we see we see a few images of your installations. Where exactly is it? It's uh, near Villa Martin. Mm. It's a uh, kennel street near um, two kilometers from Villa Martin and four and a half from San Miguel. Okay, it belongs to San Miguel de San Miguel. It belongs to San Miguel. Yes. Okay, good, good. So, also if somebody like um, wants a dog, but is not sure yet mm. what dog and then how to so could could come and see you and also yes, and get yeah. used to a dog and mm. play around and then see whether it's really something yes and can also try it for a few can weeks come. or whatever okay uh, if it works then it works if not we take it back okay well that, that's can come once a day to go for example with her or with yeah. my dog to, to learn yeah. what yeah. it means to look for a dog mm. because very often um Kids uh, get yeah. as a present get a yes, dog. That's, a, that's a, the worst thing possible. Mm. The dog as a present isn't a good idea mm. Mm. because the dog gets older very quickly, yes, gets bigger uh, very quickly. At the beginning, very cute and very yes, nice, yes, yes. and, and they need a lot of attention every day. Mm. You have to go with them to look mm. for them, bring them to the vet. Yes. Mm. And maybe it's they, they buy a puppy, very small, very cute, and within time, it's. Much, much bigger, and now it mm. can't live in the in the flat. Mm. In the flat. Mm. Mm. And then holidays but, arrive. Yes, yeah. that's an amazing. Then, yeah, we are, then we you find them in the street. Mm. Mm. So, um, in in the in in your website, uh, you're also saying, uh, on, or basically on the Facebook page, mm. this is the best place to 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 visit or uh, to see to yes. learn about you. Mm. Um, it's facebook.com uh, backslash. Corazón del Perro, um, mm -hmm. so Perro. Um, I think we will see it somewhere on, on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, they, you, you also mentioned that it might be possible in the future to even have funerals on, on, the, on your installations. Yes, so. we try to do this. It's very difficult now because we have to have a lot of official things mm -hmm. from the Ayutamento. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy to do that, but mm -hmm. we will do it. Mm -hmm. I think within the first quarter of the next year. Okay, so soon mm -hmm. you will be able yeah. to have a nice funeral and to mm -hmm. say goodbye to then, your loved ones. Yes, because yes. we all know that a dog is, is more than, than just an animal to you. It, it becomes a close, very, very, family. Close, <laughs> very close friend and it's really it's really sad to see what, what happens to dogs. And yeah. it's nice having people like you looking after them and giving them a new home, finding hopefully a new family as for Cora. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What do you think, what, what would be the best family for Cora? I think it's very important that in the family there at least is one wife. Mm -hmm. See, in the moment with fighting with every man, mm -hmm. I think once she was beaten by a man or mm -hmm. something like that, mm -hmm. when she hears a loud voice, mm -hmm. loud a noise, voice. she is running away. Okay. So a family, mm -hmm. I think better without children, mm -hmm. because children, she might be shy, I don't mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. but when they are running, moving, mm -hmm. it's not good for her. Or probably a single woman that looks after Single woman would be perfect. company, that or would be great. Mm -hmm. Smaller family. Okay. Perfect, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and she is about two years. Okay, sorry. She is fit, she is sexy, mm -hmm. has all vaccinations, mm -hmm. she has a ship. Mm -hmm. So, I so think she's ready she to go. Be a dog. Yes. Mm. And and she would be if somebody says, well, she's so cute. I mean, you look at her; she's very, very nice. Mm. Um, and she's shy, but she needs to be adapted. She, she somebody could come to you, spend a little bit time with her, yes, get used to uh, and so on, until she really got familiar with the person, yes. and then you take it away. It mm. would be wonderful. Okay, that would be great. Um, what, what normally, as a non-profit organization, what are you most looking out for? What what is what we are most looking out for volunteers mm. to help at the finger when we start uh, keeping the dog at the finger. At this time, we don't do, but in a few weeks, we, the finger will be ready, ready, so we can take dogs there, mm. and then we will need volunteers mm -hmm. to feed the dogs, to mm -hmm. walk with them, mm -hmm. 
Okay. And all other necessary mm. things. And obviously, I can imagine sponsorship is also important. Yes, so yes. yes that's also important. Yeah, yeah. So, um, that's how very expensive. <laughs> I guess so. Food, installations to set up, yeah. and cleaning, and all that. And all mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, there is, there is many um, um, dog associations in, in the area, I think, um, perveras, as you call them mm -hmm. in Spanish. But um, I think I haven't heard of any that, that where you can leave the dog when you go on holiday. I think that's that's mm -hmm. something very nice, so a good service to something be offered. Something that's missing. Yeah, yeah, missing exactly. So. That was a kind of the idea of your yeah. yes, of it. Okay. Because that's a problem that we have. What mm. do we do with, or what can yeah. you do with three dogs when you go on yeah. holiday? Yeah, even if it's just for a short break, you got to go away. Is, mm -hmm. that, is there a minimum stay for the dog, or you can leave it from a day to... No, that's not minimum. Okay, so you can leave from one day to one weekend to yeah. a week or whatever. That's it. Hopefully not a year. That would be too long. <laughs> then it could stay. <laughs> yeah, that would be far too long. Okay. Then we will search another home with it. When mm. it's clear that it will be a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Prost and Ms. Helena. Thank you for being here. And if you are interested in dogs, would like a dog, would get familiar with dogs um, or your kids, um, it's probably the best place to go here in San Miguel de Salinas, the Association del Corazón del Perro in San Miguel de Salinas, just about four kilometers out of the, out of the village and from two kilometers to Villa Martín. Uh, best is to go to the Facebook page, facebook.com, backslash, 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 sorry, Corazón del Perro, and you will find contact information there. Thank you very much and um, all Thank the best for... Thank you for the chance to come here. <laughs> and I hope you will find somebody soon for Cora. We okay. hope as well. Okay. Um, that was it for today. Um, see you very soon, next week. And um, again, we are in summer. We are going, heading right into, into the summer. And holiday will start soon. Um, our program will change slightly within the next couple of weeks. Um, but we will be here throughout the summer for you with interesting information here at the Vega Baja Real Estate Talk with Ulrich at Television Vega Baja. Thank you and see you soon.